here in the sports arena third and final round action young Mo Hio of South Korea against Efren Tabanyas of the Philippine Islands this has been a good fight a favored Korean facing a very decent tussle from the tough customer from the Philippines Tabanyas it's been an excellent fight to watch from the point of view of discussing Olympic score, in my opinion. Harder blows have been leveled by Tabanyas, but those blows have been much less frequent than the Korean's constancy of scoring with the left jab, a caution to the South Korean. One hard blow that excites the fans if scored by Tabanyas doesn't compare to the seven blows registered unanswered in succession by the South Korean. Even there, that flicking left, getting in. All the while, Tabanyas seeking to land one blow. This round clearly overwhelming. It seemed almost inevitable. This South Korean will be a very tough customer for Steve McCrory because of the reach edge he will have on Steve. Now, Tabanyas tries to strike back. You hear the crowd getting into it. But I think this could be it. Let's see. Doctor looking. Well, oh, doctor's going to permit him blood in the mouth. Doctor's going to permit him to continue. And so the fight resumes. We have 50 seconds left in the fight. I see no question as the South Korean continues to score almost at will. But in its way, a very interesting fight. from the Philippine Islands are good fighters. I remember in 68 at the Mexico City Arena when the late Al Robinson was facing a Philippine fighter who had KO'd a prior opponent and he was giving Robinson fits when suddenly Robinson caught him with the kind of left hook that Patterson landed against Johansson on June 20th, 1960. And poof, that was it for the Filipino. And this is about it for Tobias. We'll be back with the decision. And it has to be, of course, for the South Korean, without question. Right. I'll get them before you get back on the truck. Ever get the feeling when you buy something that once you get it home, you're out on your own? Well, it's a lot different with GE. We have an answer center to help you 24 hours a day. Servicemen will show up at your convenience. And with GE financing, you may be able to get a new kitchen practically overnight. With GE, you'll never feel alone. GE, we bring good things to life. Twelve years ago, there was barely a patch of grass to play soccer on in his country. Today, his country has a championship soccer team playing in the 1984 Olympics. His country offers free education all the way through college and free hospitalization for all its citizens. It has no income tax and virtually no crime rate. His country is Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Our people are our most important natural resource. I would like to remind you once again that coming up tonight will be the finals of the 100 meter. Carl Lewis going for that first of what he hopes will be four gold medals. Of course, he'll go on in the 200 meters. 
and the long jump, and then it'll be the 4 by 100. We're going to be talking to uh, Bobby Hayes, who won the gold medal at 100 meters in Tokyo in 1964, and of course, the former Dallas Cowboy star very shortly. I'd like to give you the results of that fight from a moment ago. Hio of Korea took the decision. It was a 4 to 1 decision over Habanas of the Philippines. Okay, we'll be returning here shortly, but right now, let's go to Howard Cosell. In the middle of the Olympic boxing competition where American fighters have yet to lose a single fight, there has been a distressing incident involving coach Pat Nappy, head coach of the U.S. boxing team. He almost left this area last night. He was talked out of it at the airport by his assistant coach, Roosevelt Sanders. Why? The story unfolds in my talk with James Fox, the executive director of the United States Amateur Boxing Federation. Let's meet Jim Fox now. Now, this is Mr. James Fox, the executive director of the United States Amateur Boxing Federation, so that America can hear directly from you what happened, detail the Pat Nappy story for us. Well, Howard, I, th I think it's a situation that, it, that, that really began in Las Vegas. And it's an area whereby that uh, much pressure's been put on my coach. And it's an area that the U.S. Federation is 100% behind him and wanted and wanted to let everybody in the country know that. All right, but what happened last night? The man did go to the airport. He was going to leave. The man was discouraged by the fact that he thought the people weren't 100% behind him. He thought that he thought that that what was uh, portrayed to him in the press was the actual feeling of some of the kids. And we discussed that with the kids. We've discussed it with him, and that's all solved now. The kids respect Pat now. Very much so. All right. Now, what happened directly that caused him to go to the airport, Jim? It had to do with a professional fight manager and trainer bringing three of the kids to his, a gym of his choosing and inviting sports writers there, didn't it? Howard, I'm not sure about the inviting of the sports writers. I believe it was a situation where he let it be known but it, it's an embarrassment to us. Uh, it's an er something that has happened. We hope that it won't happen again. But remember this, we want to do whatever we can to help our kids. We think Pat Nappy is the way to get that done, and we're going to work whatever we have to get done. And who was the manager and trainer who took the three fighters to the gym? Emmanuel Stewart from Detroit. Okay. I think that's the story. But Pat Nappy is back. Pat Nappy has never left. He is our coach. Okay, thank you very much, Jim. Thank you, Howard. You know, in celebration of the Olympics, Los Angeles has offered some of the most wonderful art exhibits and many to honor the athletes and the world of sports. Well, we think we found the most unusual collection in town, and I think that you're going to think so too after you view this. Made of riding boots and pants? How about a golf club reading lamp? These are part of the sports furniture exhibition at a local folk art museum here in Los Angeles. They make the perfect gifts for the sports nut who has everything. The criteria were that you had to make it out of real sports equipment. And the second thing is they had to really be furniture. If it's a chair, you could sit on it, a table, you'd have to, it had to be solid, have to be able to put a drink on it, the surface couldn't be soft. And the third criteria was art, and I said that would take care of itself. Tennis racket table is the least expensive at 300, and then we have the uh, uh, bowling for lunch dining set, which is 4200. The most popular piece are the hockey stick chaise lounge and the jock strap chaise lounge and the boxing chairs. Now that's what you call a chair with good support. Now I've seen it all, and I can just see him going into a sporting goods store saying, "I need." Uh, 35 extra large jock straps. <laughs> Here's Lipton tea lover Chris Everett Lloyd. My coach watches everything from my backhand to my forehand, even what I eat and drink. That's why I drink Lipton iced tea mix with NutraSweet. It's sweetened with NutraSweet instead of sugar or saccharin, and it's got the Lipton tea I love so much. Mmm. It's so good. My coach drinks Lipton iced tea mix too, which makes me feel good because he's more than just my coach. He's also my dad.
<laughs> so, you're considering more life insurance? Uh-huh. In fact, a Northwestern Mutual agent showed us this industry rating. You've talked to the quiet company. Mm-hmm. And Northwestern Mutual was rated number one for low-cost whole life insurance. <laughs> This superior life insurance performance is another leadership benefit available only from agents with Northwestern Mutual Life, the quiet company. Well, they're a tough act to follow. I know, I know. Nissan 300ZX. Turbo. Looks fast. The Nissan 300ZX is major motion even standing still. What's that for? Speeding. Oh. Come alive, come and drive. Major motion from Nissan. At your Datsun dealer. I mortgaged my house to get my first tug. Believe me, the Genie T needed plenty of work. Good night, Skipper. Today, I own two others just like her. Because we give our customers a good, honest pull for the money, and that pays off. People who make Meisterbrow work the same way. These days, I can pick any beer I want. This tastes as good as Budweiser, and it doesn't cost as much. <laughs> Gentlemen, the drinking lamp is lit. <laughs> Meisterbrow tastes as good as Budweiser at a better price. On One Light to Live. And now, what about, uh, what's in this room here? Oh, well, that's just a storeroom. There's no merchandise. <laughs> no? <laughs> Can I take a look? I'd sure like to see. And on General Hospital, it's a kiss for a killer as Celia fights to save her husband. Just remember that I love you. For God's sakes, don't mess with Putnam. He's much too dangerous. One Life to Live, General Hospital. This week at a special time. A truly great athlete, Bob Hayes, earned the title of the world's fastest human in the 1964 Olympics. He won the 100-meter dash and easily by the widest margin in history. Today, the Olympic gold medalist joins us from our studios in Dallas. Uh, Bobby, good to be with you. Carl Lewis goes tonight. Uh, you've been listening to our discussion. Uh, what do you think his chances are tonight? Of course, he is the favorite, but it, everything happens so quickly. What do you think, Bob? Frank, I think that Carl Lewis is one of the most tremendous athletes I've ever uh, uh, seen uh, participated in track and field. No doubt about it, um, I'm quite sure that he will win the gold medal. Uh, uh, but, you know, like uh, Jimmy Hines has said before, I think it just it needs a little more concentration on what he's trying to do out of the stars and, of course, everything else that takes care of itself. You know, you ran 10 flat uh, in Tokyo. You might have been uh, a little faster had you been pressed a little bit. Uh, Jimmy Hines has the Olympic record at 995. Uh, the world's record is uh, with uh, Calvin Smith at 993. What's the possibility of a record? Could, you, you know this turf out or the, the surface out here. Is that a good surface for a record time? Uh, no doubt about it, Frank. I would, um, I would love to have been out there to, to view the uh, track uh, surface myself. Of course, you know, I was uh, not invited to the LA Games this year. For some reason or another, they, the organizing committee of Los Angeles, the Olympic Committee, uh, the sponsors of the committee, and also the spirit team, uh, for some reason, I was overlooked. But from what I can see on television, there's no doubt about it, the LA facility is the best I've ever seen. You know, I recall uh, another event that you were involved in the 4x100 in Tokyo. Uh, that was one of the most dramatic finishes I've ever seen. And they referred to Carl Lewis's finish in the 1983 World Championship. They talked about you, Bobby, because you took the baton. You were three yards back. You ran what they called an 8-9 for your 100. And that is what Carl Lewis did in the World Championships. Uh, he is that kind of a sprinter, whereas he's sort of a glider. Bobby, you were a, a football player, really turned sprinter, I think, more than anything else, weren't you? Frank, I just had a very unoxidized uh, style of running uh, comparing to uh, Carl Lewis. But uh, I, we were behind in the relay about six or seven yards, and um, I just had to give everything I got. And, uh, you know, you don't ask God to, 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 for victory. You just ask him to give everything you got to participate in whatever you're doing at that given time. And I was a very fortunate young man that I caught, you know, uh, 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 four or five athletes who were running the... Uh, the final leg of the of the 400 meter relay and uh, went on to win and brought the victory back home where it belonged in America. You know, you had another run recently, carrying the Olympic torch as it traveled some 9,000 miles around the country. What did that mean to you, Bobby? I know you were hurt when you weren't invited out here, but what did this mean to you, this moment? I'm still representing the greatest country in the world, and uh, regardless of me not being invited, I'd rather deal with these problems here than, go, than living in any other country around the world. 
What it means to me is that I, I'm representing not only my country, I'm representing my people, I'm representing my school, I'm representing my family, and everybody who's totally involved, and also Dallas. So, you know, to me, uh, I was very lucky to just be chosen to carry the Olympic torch and get back in the groove of the Olympics again. And more involved that uh, Rayford Johnson, who lifted the torch there in Los Angeles, to start the games off, pass the baton off to me in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Bobby, you've been involved in what could really be called the tragedy of our times. You were convicted of a drug possession, uh, trafficking. You served time. I know you're in a rehabilitation process. A lot of your friends, Bobby, the opponents you played against the Dallas Cowboys, and believe me, they're all out there, would like to know where your life is right now. Frank, I'm in between jobs right now. It's been very difficult for me. Uh, you, you can see all the advertisement that... Um, is, is going on in the, in the world, you, uh, sports, you never see the Bob Hayes. Uh, it's very difficult to get out there and uh, get someone to trust and believe in you now as a citizen of the game because everyone don't think in terms of your, your accomplishment that I have uh, accomplished in, in athletics, but just more or less the, the, the drug uh, 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 conviction. Frank, I spent 10 months incarceration over a total of $700 that I was indirectly involved in so this is the reason why I will, in turn, Frank, would love to get a, a good writer as a Alex Haley, maybe a director as a Norman Lear, maybe a, a major t TV network as ABC or someone who can really get out there and show the American public and, and have them to see exactly what has happened to a name athletes. Not only the name athlete, but it's to everyone, but we more or less own the predator and we the one got to play the role as a role model so i want the american public to honestly to see exactly what have happened in my life because it has been a downhill situation and it's very difficult to come up on top again when someone continue continue to uh kick you and stab you in the back and they want you to you know to try to redeem yourself well bobby what you just described and uh i being aware of it and your friends like don uh, meredith and all your pals and cowboys uh, suffered really with you uh, you went through all of that and having gone through all of that what would you say to the young people of america well that's one problem uh, that's one thing that i would like to have the american public to maybe read or see on television but i would say you know you don't directly have to be involved in anything that against the law you can be indirectly and if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time you would suffer like i am today bobby we thank you for being with us i, I know that all of your friends i mentioned before most of your opponents maybe not some of the defensive backs that you blew away and gave a draft when you went running by them uh, you of course hold so many of the cowboy records i know they all wish you well thank you for being thank with us bobby i wish you would have been here for the opening also frank thank you very much and i just want to say all right we'll be returning in just a moment swimming competition coming up Final basket, match point, the last lap. Right now, your body's thirsty for more than water. It needs thirst aid, Gatorade. Gatorade is thirst aid for a deep down body thirst. When you exercise, you lose more than water. You lose potassium, minerals, fluids. Gatorade puts it all back fast. It's no ordinary thirst quencher, it's thirst aid. Gatorade is thirst aid for a deep down body thirst. I loved it. It's going to be a huge hit. Finally, something the whole family can enjoy. Everyone's talking about Crab Legs 2 at Red Lobster. Order any entree, and for only $3, you get Crab Legs 2. One half pound of irresistible snow crab legs. Crab Legs 2. It's everything it's cracked up to be. And the critics love it. Crab, crab legs, legs 2 at a Red Lobster near you. There's only one Super Bowl of cereal, and there's only one taste that makes it the super taste of Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Just think of crispy golden flakes. Delicious, crunchy flakes of corn. So pure and simple, just can't wait. Low in sugar, loaded with vitamins and iron. So good for you, don't hesitate. For a Super Bowl of our most nutritious corn flakes ever. What a Super Bowl. Have yourself a Super Bowl. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Super taste, super good. This is the new Apple IIc. This is a computer they call Junior. You might think they're similar, 
But this one can only run this many programs, while the Apple IIc can run this many. The Apple comes with its disk drive built in, so it's much smaller. Even the price is small. Now, which one would you rather take home? The new Apple IIc. The world record held by Cornelia Siersch of East Germany. It has been an event dominated by Eastern European swimmers, particularly those of the German Democratic Republic in recent years. Here is an Eastern European swimmer who is here and is regarded as one of the favorites to win the gold medal in this event. In lane four, Carmen Bonacciu, 22 years old from Romania. You may remember her as the fastest non-East German 100-meter backstroker in history who was a disappointment in that event when she finished fourth. And there next to her in lane five will be 19-year-old Tori Trees of Louisville, Kentucky and the University of Texas. One of the biggest surprises of the United States Olympic trials when she finished second to Amy White in this particular event after being the eighth and final qualifier into the trial. In the 200 backstroke at the United States Olympic trials, Trees went out very, very fast in the first 100 meters and then was able to hang on to make the team. Others in the field with a chance to make the final. Audrey Moore, 19 years old from Australia, swimming in lane three. The fastest qualifying time so far, 213.50 by Yolanda de Rovere of Holland. Something in the 213s is probably Take necessary to make the final. There is one more heat in which there will also be some fast swimmers some who are regarded as potential medalists in the event. And I would look for Tori Trees to swim this trial just like she swam the trials in Indianapolis to go out as fast as she can and hang on, and that's exactly where she is. She feels comfortable with doing it that way. You usually don't change your strategy right before the finals of an Olympic event. Tori Trees is from the Lakeside Swim Club, the same swim team which produced Mary T. Maher, originally they've known each other since they were nine years old but unlike maher trees is a relative late bloomer she's only really emerged as a top backstroker in the last couple of years and now as they come off the wall after 50 meters tori trees is in the lead well ahead at this moment of bonacciu of romania i would look for bonacciu to make her move on the second two links a disappointment yes jim in the hundred meters i would have blamed it on the fact that the uh, olympics are here in the united states and this country is foreign to her but that's not it when she was 17 years old she came to this country and lived with barbara clemens at Barbara Ann Clemens Turner for a, almost an entire year and trained in Long Beach and in fact they want to send their messages of greetings to her. You can see she's making her move now. Perhaps just that first race in the Olympics was just too highly pressured for her because she looks like she's in control of the second 50. Minaccio has come off the wall and taken the lead now at the 125 meter mark. Tori Trees, who went out fast once again, will now move over toward the lane rope and try to hang in Bonacciu's wake a little bit as they go down toward the 150-meter mark. Carmen Bonacciu, tall, 6'3", 163 pounds. You can see she has a slower turnover, and she got a bad turn. Tori Trees got her on that turn, gained about, I'd say, a two two feet on that turn. On and Carmen. momentarily, Trees took the lead back, but now Bonacciu has reassumed it. Now, once again, we remind you the fastest qualifying time so far, 213.50 by De Rivera of Holland. It will probably take something under 215 or 214.50 to regard as a possibility to make the final. Bonacciu and Trees coming down together. It looks like Trees is going to out-touch her, and she does. And their times of 216.23 and 216.41, really slow. That is slow. Well, they went out a little hard in the first 100 meters, particularly Trees, and I think you can tell by looking at Tori that as she looks at the clock, she is not as satisfied as the American crowd here, which is applauding her for having out-touched Bonacci. I, I think she doesn't believe she went so slow. That was, that was not a good swim. It does place her in fourth place before the final heat. She's just going to have to worry to see if she can make it in but you can see Tori Trees at the bottom of the screen touching first but not you uh, terribly a slow turnover she looks sluggish in the water Trees and Benaccio will be in trouble only if the final heat is a very fast one but they'll have to wait and see 
There are lots of ways to communicate over long distances, but with some, you may not be able to reach everywhere you want, anytime you want. And a faraway message may feel far away. But you can always count on AT&T, the only long distance service that lets you call from anywhere to anywhere with operators standing by. And with AT&T, your calls will sound as close as next door. So why settle for anything less? AT&T, the more you hear, the better we sound. Reach out and touch someone. Every crime starts in the mind, in the heart. I'm a police psychiatrist. My specialty, criminal behavior. Sometimes the difference between life and death isn't a gun or a knife, but compassion, understanding. Sometimes that's the only thing that can stop the trigger finger. Lindsay Wagner. She's with you as Jesse this fall. We're with you on ABC with you. Make your weekend cookout a sizzling success with H-E-B skinless heavy beef fajitas. $1.79 per pound. Add a natural fresh dessert of delicious California red and sweet plums. Three pounds for a dollar. Clean up afterwards with Spillmate paper towels. 58 cents per roll in assorted colors. And before the family vacation, change out your oil with Golden State Motor Oil. Two quarts of 30 weight, only one dollar. Now at your neighborhood H-E-B. Summer vacation headquarters for one-stop shopping. What does it take to become a winner? It takes caring for your body in a special way, with proper exercise and rest. It requires special nutrition from a well-balanced diet, but most of all, it takes a personal desire to be the very best. For over 100 years, we've placed our reputation on your table. Enriched Buttercrust Bread. 24 Action News. We've got the people. We've got the news. Coming up now, the last heat of qualifying for the women's 200-meter backstroke. And in this heat, we're going to see the top American, 15-year-old Amy White of Mission Viejo, California. And also a Romanian swimmer, Aneta Patrascoiu, who's regarded as a favorite to win a medal. Patrascoiu will be swimming in lane four. There she is, the fastest active non-East German of all time in this event, the 200-meter backstroke. Her nation, Romania, has never won a medal in Olympic swimming. They were expected to with either Patrascoiu or her teammate, Carmen Bonatiu, in the women's 100-meter backstroke, but the two of them failed to get into the medals there. So now they have another shot here. Benatiu has swum a slow heat and is not necessarily a certainty to qualify for the final. The fastest qualifying time so far, 213.50 by Yolanda de Rivera of Holland and Georgina Parks. Great Britain is second at two, or second uh, tech at Georgina Parks of Australia, I should say. Second so far at 214.89. As they take off into the pool, remember that Patrascoiu is in lane four. Amy White, 15 years old, the Pan American Games champion in the event, is in lane five. Sandra Dahlman in lane six from Gladbeck, West Germany, youngest member of the West German Olympic swimming team, also has a chance to make the final. Amy White won the gold medal at the Pan American Games in Caracas, Venezuela last year, so she's had international experience. And that scene was a difficult one because uh, a, the crowd was very pro-South uh, American swimmers and not necessarily uh, supportive of the American effort. So she's had to deal with adverse conditions in international competition, and I'm certain that she's got control of this race. She looks good. She went out a little slow in the 50, but bringing it back harder in the 100. Very smooth backstroke. Right now, as they come toward the wall at the 75-meter mark, Manatsiu of Romania has taken command of this heat. Or check it, Hatraskoyu, I should say, of Romania has taken command of the heat. Amy White, very close to her in lane five. Amy White was born on the same day that Debbie Meyer won the 400-meter freestyle at the 1968 Olympics in Mexico City. 
coached by Mark Schubert at Mission Viejo, California. At the United States Olympic Trials, there were some who questioned Schubert's training of the Mission Viejo swimmers for this year because they started slowly in the U.S. Olympic Trials. But a gold medal tonight by either Maher or Amy White would be the sixth of the games for Mission Viejo swimmers. And right now, Amy White is moving up on Patrick Scoyer. And she better move up because that uh, split time of 10634 is slow. She's going to have to bring back this race fast to qualify in a, in a good position for the final. And she's doing that. She's making her move now. Well, both Patrascoyo and Amy White are moving out now. They benefit from the fact that the preceding heat was a very slow one. So they do not have an insurmountable obstacle to overcome as they come down toward the wall trying to qualify in good position for the final. The rest of the field has fallen off a little bit. Reed of Great Britain up in lane three has dropped back. So has Sandra Dahlman of West Germany. And in fact, Sophia Kraft of Sweden is a little bit ahead of Dahlman. But Amy White touches first in 2.15.40. That will make her the number three qualifier for the final. Patrice Goyu's time of 2.16.71 will make it into the final. And the other Romanian, Bonatiu, is also safe. So, both Americans, White and Trees, and both Romanians, Bonatiu and Patrascoyu, have qualified for the 200-meter backstroke final. What are we going to do? Taxi. Taxi. You speak English. Where do you go? Oh, no, no. We don't know where we're going. We don't know where, what to do. You see, we've lost our travelers. Oh, you uh, American? Yeah. The American Express? Yes. Yeah. American Express. He's okay. I take you there. American Express has travel service offices worldwide to help with refunds and more. Don't leave home without them. I'm starving. We've been watching for hours. Okay, the next event is the Pizza Fetch. Yeah, Pizza Hut! You call. I'm out of here. Pizza Hut, Pizza to go. Pizza Hut, Pizza to go. Kirby's back! Right. You ran for the M's. Now the jump for the O's. Kirby, great finish! Yeah! yeah. The hometown Pizza Hut. Here at the Olympic pool, American swimmers go into the last five events of the competition with a chance to equal or surpass their previous high gold medal total of 21 in Mexico City. Americans are favored in three events and have at least an outside chance to win the women's 200-meter backstroke in which qualifying was slow and no clear medal favorites have emerged. American 400-meter freestyle gold medalist George DiCarlo is favored in the men's 1,500-meter freestyle and the American men's medley relay team ranks as at least a slight favorite over strong teams from Australia, Canada, and West Germany. But the primary focus on this last night of competition will be on two individual world record holders who will be trying to enhance already strong performances in this pool. In the 200-meter individual medley for men, world record holder Alex Bauman of Canada will try for that nation's fourth gold medal. They'd gone 72 years without one before these games. And women's 200-meter butterfly world record holder Mary T. Maher of the United States will try for her third gold medal of the Games in that event. After qualifying first for the final, Maher spoke to Diana Nyad this morning. Mary T., you've been so up and you've got everybody around the country up with your 100-meter performances, both in the individual van and that blistering pace in the relay. How'd you feel in the 200 this morning? Um, my stroke felt really good and my stroke count per lap was really good. So I think just with a little bit more effort tonight, maybe I can go a good one. And it's not just effort, is it? Your whole morale has changed now that you've put a, put a lot back together in the last month since the trials. Well, it gives me a lot more confidence and just allows me to relax so much more when my stroke is feeling better. And um, the fact that things are falling into place just lets me know that I'm doing okay and, and that I can perform up to my capabilities. So the spotlight is on Mary T, Alex Bauman, and the American gold medal total as we get ready for these five events. Men's 200-meter individual medley, women's 200-meter butterfly, men's 1,500-meter freestyle, women's 200-meter backstroke, and the men's 4-by-100-meter medley relay. I'm Jim Lampley, and I'll be here with Mark Spitz and Donna Deverona to call the races. 
Jim, thank you. Of course, the uh, women swimming is affected by the Soviet boycott. The Soviets not coming to this games, boycotting these as we did theirs four years ago. However, that's not dampening the interest of many Soviets in what is going on here. What the Soviets are telling their people, though, is a little different than what you see on television. Here's Walter Rogers. After having to pretend the Los Angeles Olympics don't exist, Soviet athletes are now tuning up for their own Friendship 84 games in Moscow later this month, hoping to outdo any record set in America. In the meantime, Soviet sportscasters have pounced on criticism by the president of the International Olympics Committee that television coverage of the LA Games is weighted in favor of American athletes while allegedly slighting others. Former Senator George McGovern, who's been meeting with top Soviet officials here, speculated on why the Russians are taking the Olympic low road. I think, frankly, they're still suffering hurt feelings from the cancellation in 1980 on the part of the Americans. One recent Soviet news story warned if Russian athletes had gone to Los Angeles, they would have been abducted, taken to secret apartments, and brainwashed into defecting. Soviet insults about American athletes were much worse. Most U.S. athletes use banned stimulants and drugs, according to TASS. One Soviet story alleged every American student graduating from the 10th grade is a drug addict. Olympic star Carl Lewis was reported by the Soviets to be on dope. When Soviet journalists wrote home about the Olympic rowing competition, they called it a wedding without the bride and groom because Soviet and East German rowers were not there. Meanwhile, here in Moscow, Lenin Stadium is being meticulously groomed for a socialist love feast among the countries boycotting the Olympics, games designed to show the world sports as they should be conducted. They shrink down and fit me, so you know what that means. It means I'm the only one gonna fit in my jeans. A Levi's legendary 501 blues. A Levi's legendary 501 blues. You're not Mommy, just another baby. Sally won't rave anymore. Look, kid, there. You get that? I can fix anything. My little granddaughter had the same problem just last week. Now look, all you have to do is turn the arm, see? Al, need some help there? Maybe it's the way we look after the little things that makes the friendly sky so big. Don't worry, we'll have her flapping in no time. You're not just flying, you're flying the friendly skies. Throughout my career in government, I've come to understand the true essence of the bureaucrat. I've enjoyed an exciting relationship with the governor himself. <laughs> yeah. And I've been shown great appreciation for my contributions. <laughs> Benson, he's with you. We're with you on ABC with you. Over the past six, six days of our coverage, we have been looking around the Los Angeles and Southern California area, trying to find new interesting spots for those of you who maybe have never spent much time here or been here. Well, Ray Gandalf's gone Hollywood. We're going to get his report before we go back to boxing. We understand that nowadays, Jaws is considered pretty tame stuff by horror movie connoisseurs. But in real life, even if it's only an Ursatz shark named Bruce, it can scare the daylights out of you. Bruce performs whenever a crowd gathers, and about three million people a year visit the Universal lot. It's the third most popular man-made tourist attraction in the country, after the two Disneys. An aerial view of the Universal lot is not part of the tourist package. This gives you an idea of the vastness of the Universal that is. Here's a look at the Universal that was. The tours began in 1915 when Carl Lemley opened his lot to visitors for 25 cents apiece. And you could see silent movies being made. Talkies required quiet sound stages, so there's no live action on the current tours, and the two-bits admission fee has inflated to $11.50.
and what you get are memories. Remember the western sets where Jimmy Stewart and John Wayne rode tall in the saddle? The false front town known as Six Points was the setting for many of the universal westerns. It was here where Mae West freed W.C. Fields in My Little Chickadee. The gallows rope remains. Six Points remains too, a ghost town, although Universal uses it for TV westerns and maintains it in the hope that movie westerns will make a comeback. Keeping up the sets is easy. It's the Jimmy Stewart's and John Wayne's that are hard to come by. All the movie studios had a set like this, the quaint little village, where all sorts of skullduggery and daring do were done. Universal's is called Little Europe. Frankenstein and Dracula were filmed here. So was all quiet on the Western Front. Designers and carpenters could turn ancient Rome into the set for the movie Earthquake, in which a make-believe Los Angeles was destroyed. The same people turned the same set into East Berlin and New York City. Then there's Colonial Street, Hollywood's version of Mr. and Mrs. Middle America's home, including Mr. and Mrs. Ward Cleaver, Wally and the Beaver. It was Ronald Reagan's home long before the White House was in a movie called Bedtime for Bonzo. This is Bonzo. Marcus Welby made house calls from here. Another house where they made To Kill a Mockingbird became a hangout for Cheech and Chong. Then there's the haunting hilltop house from Psycho. Places where people starred before there were gadgets. Here in the Los Angeles Memorial Sports Arena, you are seeing the former Secretary of the Treasury, Bill Simon, President of the U.S. Olympic Committee, Mrs. Louisa Kuhn, and the outgoing Commissioner of Baseball, Bowie Kuhn. And the fight they'll be seeing right now, super heavyweights, Muhammad Yusuf of Pakistan, and the sleeper of the super heavyweight division, there he is, Lennox Lewis of Canada. Canada has two great fighters, the pure heavyweight, Willie DeWitt, and of course, the light middleweight, Sean O'Sullivan. Both given good shots at winning the gold. But Lennox Lewis has enormous punching power and he is worth a look for this reason because he could wind up being the key opponent of Terrell Biggs. The action begins in round one. Brown is already into it. Muhammad Yusuf of Pakistan trying to be the aggressor coming right in at Lewis, and he may pay the piper for that. Frankly, I think Lewis was surprised by the early onslaught of Yusuf. Good Lord, standing eight count. With all of the buildup, Lewis has received a standing eight count early in the first round, scored by Muhammad Yusuf. You have no idea the behind the scenes buildup Lewis has been getting from boxing people. However, remember, Olympic scoring, standing eight count, no more than a jab. right got in Yusuf has changed his tactics now he's not rushing well he goes back to it right there Lewis seeking to load up measure the opponent we have a minute 20 left as you saw in the first round First round action and a stunning surprise. Yusuf connecting again as he surges forward. Mouthpiece out, must be restored. Time stopped in the round. And the mouthpiece will be clean. This fight is being officiated by Dimitar Dobrev of Bulgaria. The judges are from Yugoslavia, Chinese, Taipei, Gabon, Venezuela, and New Zealand. 
Scoring again, five judges. 20 point must system. Head gear mandatory, must pronate the blow, hit with the white portion of the glove. An amazing first round. Lennox. Lewis with a good right counter punch just a few seconds ago. Counting down toward the end of round one. And actually, boxing people around here thought that Lewis would score an easy first round knockout. But that hasn't proved out at all. As we come to the end of round one, Muhammad Yusuf of Pakistan has done very well for himself, indeed, surprisingly so. Uh-oh, here comes trouble. I hate her. Yeah, but do you think she's happy? With those looks? Eh, probably not. <gasps> it's worse than I thought. Hey, what's that she's drinking? It looks like Diet Sprite. Do you think she knows it's the only lemon-lime soft drink that's sugar-free and has the great taste of lime Well, that would mean she has brains, too. Oh, I don't want to think about it. It's only Diet Sprite for you. This is the McDonald's Olympic Swim Stadium in Los Angeles. You can do it. A gift from local McDonald's owners all over the world to young swimmers and divers everywhere who've listened to that tiny voice inside. You can do it. And let it take them all the way to the Olympic Games. McDonald's, proud sponsor of the 1984 Olympics. Here at the boxing venue, we await second round action. Mohammed Yusuf of Pakistan against the heralded sleeper super heavyweight, Lennox Lewis of Canada. And in the first round, startling development. A quick standing eight count scored by Muhammad Yusuf. And between rounds, the Canadian coach kept telling Lewis, you're a boxer. Box, you can box beautifully. Why don't you box him? Because everybody was startled by the youngster from Pakistan. He won the first round, I thought, quite clearly. to the punch every step of the way. You see the right lead and he doubled on the right. Celebrities here to see the super heavyweight from America, Terrell Biggs. Bill Simon, president of the U.S. Olympic Committee, former secretary of the Treasury here. So are the outgoing commissioner of baseball, Bowie Kuhn, and his wife, Louisa. Caution to Yusuf. And the official is from Bulgaria. There was a right by Lennox Lewis. Now he's trying to unload. Again, the mouthpiece out again. The clock stops again. The repair job. of action. Bucks. <laughs> Lewis now showing movement. Real movement for the first time. Of course, these are super heavyweights. They don't begin to have the speed and the pace of the lighter weight fighters that we've been seeing.
first time in Olympic history we are having the super heavyweight classification. I think it's a very good idea. We're counting down to the end of the second round. And Lewis scored with a good combination there. He's having a better second round than first round, that's for sure. But he is still a far cry from what we had expected. against Lennox Lewis of Canada. what unexpected problems should arise. Transamerica Property, Casualty, and Life Insurance can be there to protect you. Hey, you big ape! Who's gonna pay for this mess? Transamerica. Insurance, finance, manufacturing, transportation, innovation. The power of the pyramid is working for you. The 1984 Olympics. We at Cannon eagerly await the challenge. For these games offer glory to camera and competitor alike. The Olympics, a showcase where power and precision unite to create award-winning performance. For the 84 games, once again, Cannon will perform as the official 35 millimeter camera. Once again, Cannon will capture the glory. Here we go, third round action. Lennox Lewis, Canada, against Mohammed Yusuf of Pakistan. Canadian coach, a delight in the corner between rounds. Speed, speed, give it to him. Bang, 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 you've got to win big. Don't leave it to the judges. So Lewis starts quickly. the movement. And Mohammed Yusuf keeps coming. We have a little more than two minutes left in this, the third and final round. A round that should determine the fight. My subjective view against the first round. There it was. He got it in, finally. The heralded power of Lennox Lewis dropped the opponent right there. First knockdown. And the fight is being stopped. The referee stops the contest. Lennox Lewis is the winner in the third round. Let's look at that again in slow motion. Here it is, now watch. Led with the left and that left the combination wide open, left and right by Lewis. And down went Muhammad Yusuf. After having fought a notable fight against a very, very touted opponent. T turned out to be surprisingly good. So the action continues and the excitement here at the Los Angeles Memorial Sports Arena. As you probably know, and if you don't know, you haven't been paying attention, Carl Lewis hopes to duplicate Jesse Owens' amazing feat of 1936, and that was, of course, winning four gold medals. And you'll see that quest begin tonight with the men's finals of the 100 meters. So it seemed appropriate to take a look back at the legendary figure, Jesse Owens. He was truly one of the great athletes of all time. Here's Al Michaels. Berlin, 1936. The sign of the swastika marks the eerie pageantry of Hitler's games. One man defied all the strange symbolism of these games. Jesse Owens, the antithesis of Hitler's master race, winner of four gold medals at Berlin. Jesse Owens, American Negro, the world's fastest sprinter, sets a terrific pace from the start and passes the Italian Mariani easily. Jesse died in 1980 at the age of 67, and almost 50 years after Berlin, his widow Ruth preserves his memory. Jesse was a very humble man. He did not believe in arguments. He uh, felt that 
everything was always going to be okay. And I would boil because I could say, can't be. You gotta do something about some things. Everything's gonna be okay. His homecoming from Berlin certainly indicated that he had nothing to worry about. An instant hero returning to the click of cameras and the appealing mystery of fame. I really don't, can't say much about it because I was tired, I wanted to come home. And I really did, after all, I haven't seen my wife for three months. And I'm very glad to be back home to see her. He had started out when he came back from the Olympics. He's a star. He had had all of the promises, but none of it came to be. I'm sure it must have disturbed him not to be able to get a job to take care of his family. But if he was disturbed about it, it was never mentioned to me. Doors didn't open for Jesse Owens, and so he had to take to the track again to earn a living through a series of carnival-like exhibitions. I did not like it at all, but he had agents, and these are some of the things that they would promote. It was a money-making thing. Time eventually apologized to Jesse Owens. It took 40 years, but Owens was finally invited to the White House to receive the nation's highest civilian honor, the Medal of Freedom. Ruth looked on with pride as her husband was awarded honorary degrees and became an inspirational force on the lecture circuit. Remember this, fellas. You can play basketball for so many years, you can play baseball for so many years, and you can play football for so many years, and you can run for so many years. But there comes a day when God takes the leadness from the body. And what is important? The knowledge that you have acquired at this institution of learning and then from here you go to the higher institutions of learning. People have asked him, and of course that was always the first question they would ask, did you see Hitler and did you shake hands with Hitler? I saw Hitler in his box every day. These are his words. Saw Hitler in his box every day. I went to Germany to run. Run I did wherever he was when he was giving the speech. Uh, I'm here in such and such a place, having a marvelous time, and where Hitler is is no particular concern of mine. From the richness of his life, what advice would Jesse want to pass on to today's youth? With hard work, proper frame of mind, and the right attitude, it will, you can make it all good things come to people that can work that way. Man has always been a creature in motion. We are Nissan. We make a science of motion. Nissan is perfecting vehicles powered by hydrogen, harnessing computers, electronics, to entertain you, guide you, warn you, propel you. We are Nissan. We are major motion. At your Datsun dealer. If your taco breaks apart when you bite it, try an Ortega taco. Not only won't an Ortega taco break apart, but every crunchy bite has an authentic fresh corn taste. That's because Ortega has corn authenticity. Corn authenticity because Ortega's made from real corn, not processed corn flour. Crunch into an Ortega taco. It won't break apart, and it gives you the fresh corn taste of Ortega. Corn authenticity. In the spring of 1982, Dean Witter went against the Wall Street crowd by predicting a bull market when most advised caution. Our advice was unusual, and for those who listened, unusually profitable. Dean Witter can't promise that events back then guarantee the future. But we can suggest you see us now, about the market now, because right this minute, Dean Witter is worth asking about. We hope you've enjoyed our day. We're going to take a little break in a half hour from now. Jim McKay will take our place here in the broadcast center as your host for the primetime coverage and what a night is going to be. Highlighting tonight's coverage, Carl Lewis, his attempt for the gold in the 100 meters. Also in track and field, Edwin Moses goes for his 104th straight win in the 400 meter hurdle semifinals. Kathleen? Frank, also tonight the men gymnasts are in action for the last time in these games, the individual apparatus finals. Koji Gushigan of Japan, the all-around champion, and Leaning of China will compete in five of the six events. 
And of course, Frank and I will be back to start tomorrow's coverage all day for you. We will see you then. Of course, the Olympic coverage continues in about a half hour. The games of the 23rd Olympiad have been brought to you by the Coca-Cola Company and the people in your town who bring you delicious, refreshing Coca-Cola. At the 1984 Olympic Games, Coke is it. Local McDonald's restaurants who join together to build the Olympic Swim Stadium. Canon, proud to be the world's leader in 35 millimeter photography and the official camera of the 1984 Olympics. And Sears, where you'll find great values, great service, and a great selection. You'll find the things that make life worthwhile, because there's more for your life at Sears. Travel arrangements made through and a promotion will be paid by United Airlines. Many United flights are now showing highlights of the 1984 Olympic Games. Be sure to join us in 30 minutes when our coverage of the 23rd Olympiad continues. The U.S. is sprinting for gold. Tonight, superstar Carl Lewis begins his quest for four gold medals. He's out to prove he's the world's fastest human in the 100-meter final. And following their crowning moment, there's one battle left. All-around champ Koji Gushigan and silver medalist Peter Didmar compete for individual apparatus titles. Plus, the American gold rush continues with five swimming finals. And boxing's best charge on. Coverage of the games of the 23rd Olympiad continues tonight, exclusively on ABC. It's super closeout week at Town Lake Chrysler Plymouth. We've got a new shipment of luxurious Chrysler Fifth Avenues, now up to $1,200 off with this special factory promotion. Plus, we're overstocked on Plymouth Reliance with up to $800 in Town Lake discounts available. It's a super closeout on 84 models to make room for the 85s, and Town Lake Chrysler Plymouth is ready to deal. Luxurious Chrysler Fifth Avenue, dependable Plymouth Reliant, both with five-year, 50,000-mile protection and both priced to go fast. Sale ends Friday, August 10th, so hurry to Town Lake Chrysler Plymouth. Final weekend. That's right. This is the final weekend of the $2 million one-half price furniture sale at Furniture Expo. All Lane, Sealy, and Burlington is still one-half price. Everything in the largest selection of home furnishings anywhere in Austin is still one-half price. 90 days, same as cash, credit terms, MasterCard, Visa, all acceptable. So you don't have to pay fancy retail prices. Sale ends Tuesday. Come now to the Furniture Revolution at the Furniture Expo, 505 East Ben White, and save 50% on all home furnishing needs. From KVUE TV in Austin. Twenty Four Action News with Pat Comer, Judy Maggio, Danny Elsner, and Troy Kimmel. Hello, everyone. Thanks for being with us tonight. Judy has the night off. At the top of the news this evening, residents along the Texas coast had hoped it wouldn't happen, but it has. Oil from that ruptured British British oil tanker sitting some thirty miles off the coast is beginning to wash up on the beaches. A slick of oil a mile long and two to three feet wide is now covering parts of Galveston Island. And as Tony Clark reports, the sticky problem of cleaning up the mess has already begun. Strong winds pushed the oil and tar onto the Galveston coast overnight. The water splashing against the seawall was black in places and all around there was the thick black crude that filled the air with the smell of a refinery. Despite that, many fishermen continued to cast their lines into the murky water. Dan Munoz was fishing all night long, and he said he could tell when the oil started washing ashore. Well, it was pretty fair until uh, just about a couple of hours ago, the tar ball started really rolling in with the current. And uh, now the wind's picking up, and it'll really bring it in now. The oil and the smell were too much for other fishermen. Jane Lewicki said, it's just awful, and she called it quits. The oil kept coming in and would get all over our poles and our line, and there wasn't much sense in staying. It's going to get worse before it gets better. There was a long stretch of oil five miles off the Galveston shore early Saturday morning, and it was headed straight for land. Tony Clark, CNN, Galveston. Meanwhile, high winds and choppy seas, seas have halted salvage operations on the tanker, which still contains several million gallons more of the crude oil. Work crews are waiting for the weather to improve to place booms around the spill as a barrier and then pump the oil and the water from the sea into the barges. Upon touring the area, Governor Mark White likened the cleanup efforts to planning for an invasion. With a Monday deadline approaching for a filing protest on property tax appraisals, taxpayers all over the district are deciding whether their land and homes are valued too high and what they should do about it. Jim McNabb says one South Austin Neighborhood Association has decided what they're going to do. 
As you squeezed into the standing room only emergency meeting of the Zilker Neighborhood Association today, you could easily see these property owners are serious, some fearing they may have to sell out to simply pay their taxes. We have many people here in our neighborhood that live on fixed incomes. But most were hacked off about their homes appraised as being worth less than the land they sit on. We're here about the value of our land. Right. When I, it's when like I, my land went from $4,000 to $23,000. That's what we're here. The land is valued so high in this prime area between South Lamar and Barton Creek because valuations are based on what someone with big bucks would pay for it for commercial development. The houses don't matter. This is exactly the type of situation that the homeowners are talking about, where developers will come in, buy up the land, and put in multifamily dwellings right next door or right across the street. Tax attorney Jim Pop told the crowd this type of development is quite common. Probably um, historical in any city that's growing, they're going to force out from the city and there's going to be more and more development. It happens a lot in Houston. In an effort to scale down the appraisals, the Neighborhood Association distributed about a thousand protest forms throughout the area and Pop told the residents how to fill them out. It isn't an easy process when you go before the chief appraiser or the appraiser review board. It's not an easy process. You need some facts and figures. You need to have some reason as to why he's placed too high a value on your house other than his simply it's overvalued. The association will hand deliver the stack of forms on the deadline Monday. Do they expect to have an impact? One member said, there's a time to fight and a time to shut up. It's time to fight. It's our only chance. Jim McNabb, 24 Action News. What may be the last meeting of the State Board of Education as it's now constituted ended in mild protest today. Four members of the current elected body said the board was trying to shape public school policy rather than leaving it to the new appointed board. Board Chairman Joe Kelly Butler was singled out for especially harsh criticism in a letter signed by the protesters. But Butler said the incident didn't bother him. They walked out, I didn't see them. I, they weren't here in the first place. Uh, you know, that's their privilege. Uh, they, they can have their own opinions about how they want to conduct themselves, and that's fine. I, I have no objection to that. The rebels said the board had made recent policy decisions on compensatory, bilingual, kindergarten, and vocational education that were contrary to the intent of the legislature. One Texas boy has died and another is in critical condition, both victims of a rare disease they may have contracted while swimming. Doctors say that three-year-old Derek Leach of Irving died from amoebic meningoencephalitis, a disease which they suspect he got while swimming in Lake Grapevine. The second boy, 12-year-old Ben Wright of Uvalde, was hit by the same disease after swimming in the Frio River at Garner State Park. Although the park remains open tonight, the state has banned swimming in the river. Since 1977, there have been only 80 cases reported worldwide. Almost all were fatal. It was discovered three years ago, and still it's leaving doctors baffled. Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, or AIDS is a condition that causes your body's normal defense mechanism to be broken down, leaving you susceptible to rare diseases. The AIDS scare has left many people afraid to donate blood, but Mary Sitt reports there's something you should know about blood centers. Have you been exposed to anyone diagnosed with AIDS? No. Are you a Haitian immigrant? 25-year-old Scott Parker is donating blood for the first time here at the blood center, and he's going through a screening process that's designed to keep out donors who have AIDS or who might develop it. These last few questions of a 45-item medical questionnaire are specifically geared to detect signs of AIDS. It's the first part of a screening process that every donor must undergo. Parker won't get paid for the blood he donates. He's a volunteer who decided to give blood to ensure his pregnant wife would get free blood should she need it. Afterwards, Parker signs a release, stating he's read the fact sheets on AIDS the center puts out and saying he's not in any of the high-risk groups. Those groups include sexually active homosexual men, Haitian entrants to the United States, abusers of intravenous drugs. The director of the blood center, Trudell Green, says gay leaders here in Austin have been very cooperative in urging their community not to donate. Yeah, it's the only system we've got right now, and I really feel that we're very conscientious in the questions that we ask and how we evaluate our donors. And if there's any question at all about whether they should donate or not, then we don't allow them to donate. Once Parker passes the first screening, he gets a mini physical to check his vital signs. Another test to see if Parker is physically capable of giving blood. Later, the donated blood undergoes six hours of laboratory testing. Exams to check for syphilis, hepatitis, antibodies, and a virus that can leave babies deaf. 
There's still no test to screen out AIDS. The best thing blood centers can hope for is a new test in 12 to 18 months that will allow them to detect a cancer virus, which shows up in a large percentage of AIDS victims. But Green says current methods of screening out AIDS are working well here in Austin. The chances of you getting AIDS from a blood transfusion is less than one in a million. And Green wants to keep it that way. Mary Sit, 24 Action News. There were some flo flo <laughs> foreign bodies floating downtown Lake today. Peter Jones will be with us live from Aquafest to explain when we come back. Into this unclean world has come the dirt devil, a tireless fighter against the forces of dirt. Strong, yet lightweight, compact, yet powerful, with a revolving brush that cleans up dirt wherever it lurks, in the house, car, boat, or van. Dirt devil, it's a little bit of heaven. <laughs> See the dirt devil for $59.95 at Austin Vacuum. Well, we may not have seen much rain around here lately, but some folks down at Town Lake have found some water to help them celebrate. Peter Jones is standing by live on the shores of Town Lake to bring us the latest from Aquafest. Hello, Peter. Pat, if you can tell, we've got a nice breeze blowing off the shores here at Town Lake. So while it may be a little bit hot, there is a nice cool breeze blowing off the lake. So tonight, country night should be absolutely stupendous. Now, as you know, one of the big events in Austin is the raft race. And I think uh, while there will be a lot of activity tonight, things really got hopping earlier today. Many of them arrived in the high style of Arabian sheikhs. Yes, for this group, 9 a.m. was time for a patriotic happy hour. Those rumors we heard about a Ghostbusters raft proved true. But hey, get a load out of the skipper. There are so many ghosts out here, we've got our work cut out for us. But hey, we ain't afraid of no ghosts, you know what I mean? <laughs> We'll trust you with the green grocer, Marion, but I don't know about green slime. As launching time neared, this young lady had a final request. Hi, Stan. I've been a good girl, and I want a Mercedes. Oh God, Please. <laughs> no one could tell us what Santa was doing down there. No matter, the race was on. Although in some cases, the rafts were riding the people. And in this latter-day version of Jonah and the Whale, I think the whale is winning. Now, this entry was nowhere near the finish line, but it would seem they've already struck it rich. Yes, there's oil in that there river. And now, for you environmentalists, that really wasn't oil, that was water. And here with the results of that long race, I think some people are still out there. Darlene Lewis from uh, K98 Radio. Darlene, how did they finally wind up? Well, we had uh, in the races, the first raft to finish in the races was 36 seconds. And the last raft is probably still out there, so we don't have the official time on that one just yet. But we had a lot of fun, exciting rafts out there from everything from shark busters to belly busters to ghost busters, you name it. We had them out there today. Rumor has it with the ghost busters raft, there was even, even some uh, green slime slung at a few judges. Yeah, the 24 crew slimed us. We disqualified us. No, just kidding. But we had a great time out there too, Peter. 5,000 boats and no problems. No, no, no. 5,000 participants. Ah. We had over 50, uh, uh, 500 rafts in the race, but we had 5,000 participants. And we had a good time out there. It was, it was exhausting. The wind gave us a little trouble there for a while, but for the most part it settled down and everything went smoothly after that. Now tell me, who did you award for the best creative? It went to the Viking ship. I mean, it was absolutely beautiful. I think they put a lot of work into it, and it really showed today, and they've got the best overall today in the raft race. Darlene Lewis from K90, thank you very much. Now, later on tonight, this is Country Western Night, so put on your boots and get ready to 
go out and dance your little <laughs> night away. We've got some activities tonight, and who will be performing? Well, a big act. Tanya Tucker will be on the feature stage. There's lots of room over there, so please check that out. On the country and western stage, Carl Hutchins Band, and then over on the rock stage, that's where me and my photographer will hang out all night, the Cautious Dreams Group. Over at the Beer Garden, another famous spot there where people like to go, Grimalkin, group called Grimalkin. Finally at the Austin uh, stage, Nightbird, and finally over here on our Midway stage, which is right behind me, a group called High Exposure. So uh, as you can see, we don't have much activity yet, but in about 30 minutes from now, things will open up. And if it's anything like last night, you know, I saw Mary Lou Witten, uh, Retton win the gold medal. She did a terrific job. But there were still people out here. I think they just saw her win, and they come running out here to see Aquafest, and there should be that many people tonight. So that's it from here. Peter Jones reporting live from Auditorium Shores. Pat? Okay, Peter. Looks like you're having a lot of fun. Thank you. In Los Angeles today, police have arrested a man in connection with an Olympic bomb threat. Yesterday, police raided the man's house, finding black powder, detonators, smoke grenades, and an automatic weapon. Under arrest is 26-year-old Richard Cole, a licensed pyrotechnician. Cold is thought to be more of an explosives buff than a terrorist, but Los Angeles police aren't taking any chances. Cold is in jail tonight under $200,000 bail. Today, the, the fighting in Lebanon's second largest city has stopped, if only for a while. Last night, rival Muslim militias in the northern port city of Tripoli traded mortar and grenade fire that left at least three people dead. Most of the city's residents were forced to spend the night in underground shelters, but the fighting came to a halt early this morning because students in the city had to take their final exams before graduation. Does President Reagan have a secret plan to raise taxes or not? Well, Walter, Walter Mondale says the president has such a plan and it's going to cost a bundle. However, the president says he doesn't have a plan to raise taxes, but says his opponent does. In his weekly radio broadcast, the president said Mondale would have to raise taxes by a total of $135 billion in order to make a sizable dent in the federal deficit. The president noted that's a tax increase of about $1,500 for every American household. As for his own plans, Reagan says he will not propose an increase in personal income taxes and will veto any such bill that comes across his desk. Well, today it looked like those rain clouds were surrounding the city for a while. Troy is up next to tell us what may be in store for us. Stay with us. When you eat out, is something missing? I'll have the special, juicy and rare. Here, anything juicy is rare. <laughs> then come to Coco's and taste what you've been missing. Like one of our 10 delicious burgers. Better because they're fresh. Or our Garden Fresh taco salad. It's all yours with a smile at Coco's hey. down-to-earth prices. <laughs> More coffee? She doesn't miss a thing. And if you love beef, you'll love Coco's new beef lover's menu. This is story of how Slavovia team arrived to U.S. Los Angeles Olympics, driving through Texas Austin with Bonsky truck breakdown. Lucky for us, this happened in front of Hina Chevrolet, famous American car store. <laughs> oh, that me. He's lucky because Hina has go with winter sale now till August 13th. So many cars and trucks and sale tags. Oh, this price is not found in Slavovia. It takes no time to find new truck. Now driving to Olympics in style, thanks to go with winter sale at Hina Chevrolet. Okay, here's a question for you. What has a tail, weighs about a billion tons, and is heading straight toward us? Well, it's Halley's Comet, and some scientists at the California Institute of Technology say they've learned a little bit more about it. Even though the comet is still 800 million miles away, they've managed to take some pictures of it through a 200-inch telescope. Those photos show the comet is due to come closest to the Earth in February of 1986. That ought to be pretty nice. That should be interesting to get a view of that, at least. Oh, it comes can't... around, I guess, once in a lifetime. That's right. And February right. is a typically cloudy month. Uh, that's something to think about, is that we get a little closer to that in 1986, at least some type of forecast there, long-range forecast, <laughs> if you will. A long range. Looked like we might, we might have gotten some showers in the local area today, got off to the southeast, though, and they began to die out. All a result of a very, very weak trough of low pressure along the Gulf Coast. We'll take a closer look at that in a moment. Outside now in Austin. 5 o'clock temperature officially you know, was standing at about, um, well, I can't tell you exactly what the 5 o'clock temperature was, but I can tell you there was no rain today. Today's high was 96 degrees. Morning low was about 73 degrees. And a quick look at your area lakes now will indicate a water temperature at Lake Travis to stand at about 85 degrees as of midday today. 
Uh, this is the way the satellite are, we shaped up this afternoon, and we'll start out this evening uh, with the satellite picture. You can see the coastal showers and thunderstorms, a weak trough of low pressure along the coastal bend this afternoon. Spawn showers and thunderstorms, you can see these coming pretty close to the Austin area. This is a 4 o'clock shot, by the way, so it is a couple of hours old. But it gives you some indication, indeed, how close the showers and even thunderstorms came to the Austin area. Some heavy thunderstorms north of the Houston area. Also notice uh, in north central Texas showers and thunderstorms. Notice a thunderstorm about right there. That produced a brief tornado that touched down out in Mitchell County, which is east of the Big, uh, Big Spring area this afternoon. No damage reported by the DPS, but indeed at one time that was a severe thunderstorm. Some thunderstorms back up the eastern slopes of the Rockies. A little closer to home on our uh, 24 color weather radar, you can see off to the northeast and north of the city, uh, back up north of Waco, back uh, southeast of Waco toward Bryan College Station, some showers showing up. Some showers out in the uh, southwestern portion of the Texas Hill Country also this afternoon. Most of the showers that were in the coastal bend are now beginning to die out as this daytime heating slowly begins to go away. It will continue to occur. Uh, the showers should continue to dissipate, rather, as sunset gets a little, uh, a little bit closer during the evening hours tonight. Temperatures or rain scan. I've got everything all messed up tonight, but in any case, we'll try to step our way through it. You see all the showers that did form in that sea breeze front or along that trough of low pressure along the coast. Thunderstorms in north central Texas. The most intense activity, as it has been in the past few days, has been far to our east over portions of Louisiana and Arkansas. Around the World's Fair over New Orleans, they have had upwards of eight inches of rain in portions of coastal and southeastern Louisiana in the last three or four days. That has been the response to that low pressure trough along the coast and it has not shifted to the west very much. So indeed, the heaviest rain has remained to the east of the local area, primarily over southern coastal areas of Louisiana. Temperatures at 4 p.m. this afternoon ranged all the way up to 95 up around Waco, 97 at Wichita Falls. Beginning to cool down around Dallas-Fort Worth, they did have a thunderstorm there this afternoon. Little Rock was getting a pretty heavy thunderstorm at 4 o'clock, as was Monroe in Louisiana. Elsewhere, you notice the temperatures are quite warm with lots of sunshine over much of the state this afternoon, exception being those rain areas. National weather this afternoon dominated by that uh, very little actual pressure system problems, but we do have that trough of low pressure along the coast of Texas that is producing showers and thunderstorms, 87 at San Antonio at last check. Showers and thunderstorms have been very general, though, this afternoon, all the way from the northern and central plain states back into the Great Lakes and back into the lower Mississippi Valley. Temperatures over much of the nation are quite mild, not quite as warm as they have been with all the cloudiness and showers. 85 at Bismarck, currently 84 at Denver. 73, sunny at Seattle this afternoon on the east coast. 81 at Caribou, Maine. It's 87 degrees around Miami. For Austin, this is the way it shapes up, our forecast. Partly cloudy, a few afternoon and evening thunderstorms. Probabilities are running between 20 and 30 percent. The highest probability during the evening and late afternoon hours. Continued hot, low tonight of 74, the high tomorrow of 94 degrees. Winds will continue out of the southeast for the next couple of days. A little stronger during the daytime hours and stronger and very gusty in the vicinity of thunderstorms. In our extended forecast, how about partly cloudy skies? Pat, there will be a chance of rain each day, uh, probably a 20 or 30 percent chance each day. For the most part, it will be partly cloudy, and uh, that rain chance will continue to be very low. Well, maybe we'll get some of that maybe. moisture. Maybe. maybe. All right, thank you. Danny Elsner is next with sports. He'll take a look at a local Olympic athlete through the eyes of his coach. I love sports, my wife hates them, but I still enjoy them with Walmart's great low price on Polaroid videotape. Polaroid videotape for two, four, and six hour recording is a fantastic low $6 every day. At that low price, I can record all of my favorite programs and play them back later when she's not around. Ralph, you've been in that family room a week. Walmart's everyday low price of $6 on Polaroid videotape makes my day. It's a better day when you save the Walmart way. Explore Texas, it's the finest place to go. Explore Texas, there's some real good friends to know. Explore Texas, there's so many fun things to do. And Texas is waiting for you. Texas, Texas explore the Republic of Texas. It's time for a look at sports with Danny Elzer. Got some Olympic athletes from our area. Well, a guy from Texas doing very well out there, but he could do better. Rick Carey, the only UT swimmer to ever win the gold, but he knows he could do even better. And so does his coach, Eddie Reese. He's going to be excited. He's going to pound the water. Eddie Reese was excited, too. He and his family gathered around the television last night to watch Longhorn Rick Carey go for the gold again. But Reese saw his swimmer have another off performance. Oh, Kerry won again, but his Texas coach said it was another funny race. 
Reese said Rick was simply not sharp in the 100-meter backstroke, but he was still impressed that Carey could finish first anyway. A second gold medal for Rick Carey. I thought his start was good, his turn was good. He just, he just didn't have the little bit extra that he normally has. Now, he's, see, Rick is, he's talented in a, in a different way than we think of talent or as I as a coach think of talent. I think of talent as speed. Somebody like Carl Lewis is talented. Uh, Rick is not fast. He just never slows down. And his top speed last night wasn't as fast as it usually is. How do you think he'll do tonight? In the medley relay, he'll probably make everything I say here wrong and just go crazy. <laughs> now tonight, those U.S. swimmers could break the all-time Olympic gold medal record. The Americans have won 21 gold medals at the Mexico City Games in 1968, and they'll need to only four more tonight to break that record. In basketball, the U.S. men had their first real challenge today. They battled Spain. The game stayed close until the second half. Patrick Ewing with the slam right here. He finished with 15 points. The United States trailed twice before halftime, but Chris Mullen sparked the Americans in the second half. He finished with 16 points. Michael Jordan led the U.S. with 24 points, three on this three-point play. The Americans handed Spain their first loss of the Olympics. Final score, 101 to 68. Bobby Knight's squad still undefeated. In boxing, Americans continued to dominate as well. Here, flyweight Steve McCrory knocked down Fausto Garcia of Mexico. McCrory scored two knockdowns in that opening round, and after the second one, the referee stopped the fight. McCrory recorded a first-round victory. American boxers are still overwhelming their competition at those Olympic Games. What a punch. Tonight, the Dallas Cowboys will begin their preseason schedule against Green Bay. Danny White will start at quarterback, and Randy White is still not in sight. We'll have uh, highlights after the Olympics. Also, the Houston Oilers will unveil their new quarterback tonight, along with their new head coach. Hugh Campbell will start Warren Moon when the Oilers play at Tampa Bay. In baseball, the Texas Rangers had trouble with the long ball in Boston. The Red Sox hit three home runs against uh, the Rangers, pitching two off Frank Tanana. Here's one of them, Wade Boggs with a long blast, bottom of the fourth, and the Rangers go on to win. Uh, the Rangers go on to lose. Uh, Boston wins that game 5-2. We have other scores now. It was Kansas City over Detroit 9-5, the White Sox over Milwaukee 7-3, and Oakland leads Seattle 4-2 in the eighth inning in the National League. Los Angeles-Cincinnati all tied up 3-3 in the ninth, and the Cubs are leading Montreal 4-0 in the seventh. And we'll have more scores tonight at 10. In golf, Tom Kite did something in Memphis he hardly ever does. He missed the cut. He can afford it. Kite has won over $300,000 so far this year. Here's a look at today's action. The leaders, Bob Eastwood, right here on number 18 for a birdie. That tied him for the lead with Ro Lauren Roberts. Roberts had to make a 25-footer to save par right here on number 17. Downhill, what a putt. It goes in. Eastwood and Roberts are tied 8-under. Former Longhorn Mark Brooks is at 1-under. He'll make some money this weekend. And the final round of that tournament tomorrow. You can still get in some good fishing this evening. Fishing should still be good from about 7 o'clock until 10 o'clock tonight. Then tomorrow, the best time will be in the morning from 7 o'clock until just before noon. It'll be good again tomorrow night from 8 until 10.30. And that's our fishing game forecast. Carl Lewis is going for his first gold medal tonight as well. That's right. Okay. Thank you very much, Danny. The fun was flying all over Austin. We'll show you what we mean coming up next. Stay with us. in the opposite direction. Wanted, dead or alive. Your used car during Bounty Hunter Days at your Texas Ford dealer. Bring us your old used car and collect your reward. Clearance deals on special value package tempos loaded with options. Special value package Thunderbirds save over $600. Clearance price Mustangs, Crown Victorias and more. Big rewards on all new Fords whether you buy or lease, trade or no trade. See your Texas Ford dealer, your headquarters for quality. The original We're science you. fiction space adventure returns. The pattern of your death. I'm not going to move from this spot. There are shadows, illusions, nothing but ghosts. Star Trek, beginning Monday, August 13th at 4 on 24. More than 152 and four-legged contestants were at Waterloo Park today for the Waterloo World Flying Disc Festival. Today, preliminary competition was being held in Frisbee Golf. 
Teams of two are also being judged in freestyle competition with the final rounds to be held tomorrow. The contest is sponsored by KOBJ FM here in Austin and Lone Star Flying Disc Productions. Proceeds from the refreshment sales, entry fees, and tickets will go to replace the blue bonnets that used to cover the park. The flowers were destroyed several years ago when thousands of people met in the park for the Blue Bonnet Festival and trampled them to death. It will take about $2,000 to replace the flowers, but the money from this contest, along with one next weekend, along with a little rain, should make the park bloom again. Well, if you were out of Brookstrom Air Force Base today, you're probably still talking about the aerial displays that were part of AeroFest 84. Hundreds of Austinites went out to Brookstrom today to take a look at the Air Force's latest jets, from small attack planes like the A-10 to the huge transport jets. But the day's biggest attraction was the attack simulation. There was a parachute jump by soldiers from Camp Mabry, and following that was an attack demonstration by an A-10 ground support jet. The jet spun, climbed, dove, and did figure eights, all to the delight of today's big crowd. AeroFest is an annual event sponsored by the 67th Tactical Reconnaissance Wing, which is stationed at Brookstrom Air Force Base. That's a lot of fun. That's a report for now. We'll be back a little bit later tonight in between the, uh, the Olympics. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night. 24 Action News, voted best newscast in Texas by the Associated Press, is a presentation of KVUE-TV. Emergency Medical Services, EMS. It's not just getting you to a hospital fast, it's getting you there alive. Final weekend! That's right, this is the final weekend of the $2 million one-half price furniture sale at Furniture Expo. All Lane, Sealy, and Burlington is still one half price. Everything in the largest selection of home furnishings anywhere in Austin is still one half price. 90 days, same as cash, credit terms, MasterCard, Visa, all acceptable. So you don't have to pay fancy retail prices. Sale ends Tuesday. Come now to the Furniture Revolution at the Furniture Expo, 505 East Ben White, and save 50% on all home furnishing needs. Beverly and I have been happy together for 35 years. Then suddenly last night, Herbert kicked the bucket. People everywhere are kicking the bucket for the great taste of Church's fried chicken. Church's chicken is bigger than Kentucky Fried. And you always get Church's at a deliciously low price. Mmm, Church's chicken is delicious. Herbert, you should have kicked the bucket years ago. Right now, get any medium soft drink for just five cents with a dinner pack purchase. The following sports special is an exclusive presentation of 24, KVUE-TV, Austin. ABC's coverage of the games of the 23rd Olympiad continues as we come to you live. That is a live shot of the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, and it is filling up. We might have close to 90,000. It could be the largest crowd ever to watch track and field competition in the United States. And we come to you live because right now, Evelyn Ashford, who holds the world record 10.79, who won this morning, won her first round heat is getting set now in the second round. I'm Al Michaels, along with Wilma Rudolph, who won three gold medals in the 1960 Olympics. We watch Ashford here in lane seven. Angela Bailey in lane six is another contender in this race. Lillian Gachet and Heidi Goggle in lanes five and three, respectively, are also to be watched. Top four will advance to tomorrow's semifinals. And from the start, it is Evelyn Ashford in lane seven, out in front immediately. It is Ashford out in front of the rest of the field, and Evelyn will go on to the semifinals as she wins it. It appears that Bailey wound up second, and Heidi Galvo of West Germany finishes third. Unofficially, her time, 11.22. Her world record clocking, 10.79. So she was not tested today as Evelyn wins her second race of the day, Wilma. Right. Well, I knew she wouldn't be tested this second time because the, I think the thing is, coming out the first time, you, you're the most frightened. After you run the first race, uh, you sort of have it in hand. And I think the time that made, the thing that made the difference in the time is not to have a uh, Heather Oaks run next to you. They're off. They're getting ready now. They're on their marks. Evelyn is out. She has a really good start. You can tell that her confidence is there. She's beginning to pull from the very beginning on her first, I, I would say after her first 10 steps. She's well on her way. She's looking good. 
very good form all the way to the finish line very relaxed good time especially for a semi and she is presently acknowledging the cheers of this huge crowd at the Los Angeles Coliseum on a hot day. I believe the temperature is probably still up over the 90 degree mark. Let's isolate on her now. Right, she's very good um, position. Very good start. If you notice that first foot is still just a little bit off, but uh, the confidence is coming. She's off, her style is good. She's running very easy, she's running very relaxed. She's getting ready now to pull away, and this is where Evelyn accelerates. I would say after the first 20 yards, her speed just becomes faster and faster. I think the farther she runs, the faster she becomes. Well, this was the first heat of four in this second round. Alice Brown and Jeanette Bolden have yet to run as they attempt also to join Evelyn Ashford in the semifinals and the finals, which will take place here tomorrow. So Evelyn Ashford, 27 years old, who lives here in Los Angeles now, begins our coverage tonight with a victory in the 100-meter dash at the Coliseum. A look at the big crowd as our coverage of the Olympic Games continues. weekend like this one, hundreds of thousands of Los Angelinos would normally be headed for the beaches, jamming the freeways, filling the air with fumes. But on this particular weekend, the big crowds are filling the Olympic venues, particularly the Coliseum, where track and field moves into high gear. From Los Angeles, California, ABC Sports presents the games of the 23rd Olympiad. Hello, I'm Jim McKay. This is the day of Carl Lewis' debut in an Olympic final, but it's also the day of the American male gymnasts in their final appearance. The final day of competition for Mary T. Maher and the other great swimmers of the world. We've seen Evelyn Ashford already. Another look at Edwin Moses, the American half-milers in second round action, along with Britain's Sebastian Coe and Steve Ovette, and so much more today and this evening. Now, Al Michaels is at the Coliseum for track and field. Let's check in with him first. Well, Jim, we had a crowd of close to 70,000 this morning. They expect almost 90,000. Every seat may be full tonight. It's a big night of track and field. What happened this morning, among other things, Tom Petronoff, the former world record holder in the Javelin, did qualify, a member of the United States team, of course. Also, Duncan Atwood was right on the edge, but he became the 12th and last qualifier to go into the Javelin final tomorrow. All of the American runners who should have advanced did so. No surprises there. Now, tonight we have already seen Evelyn Ashford in action. And still to come, of course, will be Carl Lewis. We'll be taking a look at him, hopefully twice for Lewis's sake, in the semifinals. And then if he makes his way into the finals later on as he seeks gold in the 100-meter dash. Mike Conley of the University of Arkansas, the top qualifier in the triple jump yesterday. He and Willie Banks going into their final event tonight. And then Edwin Moses tries to stretch his winning streak to 104. All of that coming up from the Coliseum. This is Jack Whitaker at Pauley Pavilion, where tonight we have the men's individual competition. Gold, silver, and bronze medals will be won tonight in all six of the apparatuses on which the men perform. In the floor exercise, look for Bart Connors leading the United States, having scored a 9.95 in the compulsory exercise. On the pommel horse, Peter Vidmar, the all-around silver medalist, will be among the favorites. He scored a perfect 10 on this apparatus in the compulsories. At the still rings, Li Ning, the personable young Chinese, scored a 10 on the rings in the optional exercise. Mitch Gaylord of the United States will face tough opposition on the vault, but is capable of winning yet another medal for the United States. On the parallel bars, the all-around gold medalist, Koji Gushikin of Japan, has been consistency itself. He has scored 299. And Koji's teammate, Shinju Morisue, has been not only consistent, he has been perfect on the horizontal bar with 210 scored in the compulsories and optional. Lots of medals, lots of high-power performances tonight at Pauley Pavilion. Howard Cosell here at the boxing venue as the parade of American victories continues tonight. You'll see the brilliant light flyaway Paul Gonzalez in his second bout of the competition. An early victory over a very difficult South Korean opponent. And then you'll meet again 
the light heavyweight Evander Holyfield, favored to win the gold in his division. I'm Jim Lampley. Competition comes to a close in swimming tonight, and Americans are favored to pad their gold medal total of 18 to at least 21, which would equal the all-time high set at Mexico City. George DiCarlo is favored to add the 1,500-meter gold medal to the one he already won in the 400-meter freestyle, and the men's medley relay team ranks as at least a slight favorite in what could be a sensational battle with the Australians, the Canadians, and the West Germans. But much of the focus here will be on two individual world record holders. Canadian Alex Bauman will try to add the gold medal in the 200-meter individual medley to the one he won in the 400-meter race. It would be Canada's fourth. They went 72 years without a swimming gold medal prior to these games. And American world record holder Mary T. Maher will go for her third gold medal of the games in the women's 200-meter butterfly. So the focus will be on Bauman, Maher, and the American gold medal total as swimming comes to a close. The games of the 23rd Olympiad are being brought to you by Kodak, official film of the 1984 U.S. track and field team. Kodak film, because time goes by. Budweiser, proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Allstate, for home, auto, business, health, and life, you're in good hands with Allstate. And local McDonald's restaurants who joined together to build the Olympic Swim Stadium. Feel like you're part of the Olympic action. Play McDonald's when the U.S. wins, you win Olympic games. What time is that, Mom? Basketball. The U.S. wins. Then we win. When the U.S. wins a medal in the event on your game card, you win a Big Mac. Or regular fries. Or regular Coca-Cola or win up to $10,000 instantly. So go to McDonald's and collect your game cards, because when the U.S. wins, you win. Way to go, Mom. Olympic stars can start out like this, so catch them now with a Kodak disc. I'm gonna get you with the Kodak disc. The shoe is shooting, I'm not gonna miss. Not when it's as easy as this. I'm gonna get you with the Kodak disc. The Kodak disc camera advances automatically and knows when to flash. Think there's a camera easier than that? Not by a long shot. You're never too small to give it your all. I'm gonna get you with the Kodak disc. Kodak, official sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team. My dad's a hero. Yeah? He fixed the whole house with Stanley. Stanley who? Stanley Hardware. He helped Mom put up plant hangers, put a tree lock on her door to keep bears out. Stanley shelves for my room and safety latches so my sister can't get the scissors. She's just a kid. He put magic spray hinges on our door. It closes by itself. I'm telling my dad. Get a $2 rebate from Stanley on the magic spring hinge at participating stores. Time. It takes time to create quality. The quality taste of Budweiser. Time to select the choicest ingredients. For exclusive beechwood aging, to brew the distinctively clean, crisp taste of Budweiser. Quality taste. That's what people want in a cold glass of beer. And this is the one they want. Somebody still cares about quality. Sixty-four years ago, after the American Charlie Paddock won the Olympic 100 meters, somebody called him the world's fastest human. Well, ever since, the winner of that event in each Olympics has been awarded that unofficial title. What a litany of great names they've been, really. Harold Abrahams, he of Chariots of Fire fame in 1924. Little Eddie Tolan running with his glasses taped to his head here in L.A. in 1932. Jesse Owens in Berlin and Bob Hayes in Tokyo. And Jim Hines setting a world record that stood for 15 years in Mexico City. The event's thought of as an American specialty, so it really comes as something of a surprise to realize that no American has won it in 16 years. The Soviet Valery Bortsov swept both sprints in 1972. Hazley Crawford of Trinidad and Tobago won at Montreal. And of course, the U.S. didn't participate in 1980. Now comes Carl Lewis, entourage and all, heralded with everything but trumpets as the new king, the new Owens, the invincible, the unbeatable. Is he really all these things? Well, the test begins this evening, really, with the semifinals and then the final of the 100 meters. Right now, however, we're in the process of trying to find out who is the world's fastest woman. Right, out. 
That's right, Jim. That, I liked uh, the way you put it, too. In a way, I think I referred to this yesterday, the 100 meters is the mark. great American race, but you put it so well. It's been uh, a number of years, since 1968, since we've had a male winner. It's also been that long since we've had a an American woman win the 100-meter dash. Wyoming Atias was the last to do it. Now, we've seen Ashford qualify. Here is Alice Brown now in this heat. This is the third of four heats. The top four finishers will advance to tomorrow's semifinals. Yeah. Alice Brown who ran 11.15 this morning out of lane four. And it's a very good start for Alice Brown. It's Alice Brown out in front of the field. It is Brown with Maryama of Finland in lane three in second place. And it's Brown winning it. Maryama lines up second. Heather Oaks of Great Britain finishes third. So, an 11.35 for Alice Brown, who of course runs in the shadow of the heralded and highly publicized Evelyn Ashford, the world record holder. But Alice has been very much holding her own, looked very strong in her heat this morning, competed in the World Championships at Helsinki, Wilma Rudolph, and she has to be quite happy with her performance today. Oh, I think she's quite happy. She's worked very hard. You can tell she always turns around and looks to see what happens time-wise. But she has an excellent start. She always gets a fantastic start. And she's out, and she's already running smooth. If you can look right now, she's running relaxed. Her knees are up, her, her arms are pumping. She has complete control. I was thinking that since uh, Oaks was in the race with her, that it would be a closer race. But I think they have to be a little closer together from the standpoint of lane assignment. Now they're a the great top, finish. The top three, we called them for you, Mariama and Oaks. And finishing fourth in lane seven was Juliet Cuthbert. And that's significant because she too now advances. Also, I think it's significant to note a 2.3 meters per second headwind. That's a pretty big headwind for these ladies in this heat. If you notice she's um, concentration is there if you notice her first step is good excellent first step and she's driving out and this is all of the power in those first five to ten steps and once she straightens up a little bit and really gets into the race her form is excellent she looks fantastic she runs very easy I think she will uh, really do well by the next race going her confidence is building each time and the thing about Alice Brown is she's hungry she's determined and uh, in a, a race that is so short, there's no pre-planning. The thing is trying to always get a good start and, and maintaining. And she did exactly that in, that in this race here. And here's a lady who might have quit. She won the trials in 1980 and because of the boycott, did not get to go to Moscow naturally. Thought about retiring, but uh, here she is now on her way to the semifinals at the age of 23, her home nearby in Altadena. So we've seen Evelyn Ashford and we have seen Alice Brown, and there are the results, the top four, that advance to the semifinals in the Women's 100. It isn't easy keeping in shape, but Don Gwaltney isn't doing this just for his health. He's doing it for money. The money he's saving on his life insurance with an all-state shape-up and save discount. We figure if you're in better shape, you deserve a better rate on your insurance. So if you keep yourself in shape, you could save up to 35% on Allstate Life Insurance. Shape up and save. It pays to talk to an Allstate agent. You're in good hands with Allstate. If you think beautiful skin is only something you're born with, get wind of sea breeze. Beautiful skin can be a breeze with sea breeze. Cleanses, scrubs, rinses skin clean. Beautiful skin can be a breeze with sea breeze. Invigorates, softens, let skin breathe. Beautiful skin can be a breeze. Beautiful. With sea breeze. What makes Peerless America's number one do-it-yourself washerless faucet? It goes in fast, it's built to last. It's even warranted. It lasts a long, long time. No tools to use, you just can't lose. And look, it doesn't rip. It lasts a long, long time. Peerless washerless faucet installs in no time. It lasts a long time. It lasts a long, long time. Peerless lasts a long time, but our $6 rebate only lasts till August 31st. Hurry. It's your first taste of the day, starting fresh, starting pure. It's your first taste of the day, so you make sure that you let it may begin. We always make sure our first taste of the day is the best it can be. 
with 100% pure Minute Maid orange juice. The first taste of the day. Live again, they're in the blocks. We're set for the fourth and final heat, second round for the women's hundred. Jeanette Bolden, United States, in lane four. And it's a great start for Bolden. She's out in front immediately. Lovala France is in second place. On the outside, here comes Grace Jackson. And it's Jackson crossing the line in tandem with Bolden. Very, very close. I think Grace may have won it. Bolden winds up second. It looked like Pauline Davis of the Bahamas finished third. The top four go to the semifinals, so it really doesn't matter if you finish first or fourth or second, as the case may be with Bolden here, who got a terrific start, but there's Grace Jackson from Jamaica, who came on acknowledging the response of the crowd, as she is the winner of this heat. Jeanette Bolden, who got out of the blocks in a big hurry, becomes the third American now to go to the semifinals, Wilma. Well, here we are. Jeanette Boulder has a fantastic start. And the thing with the sprint is having a fantastic start, being able to accelerate and maintain. And we, if we're looking over to her left, you will see that Grace Jackson will sort of ease up uh, and uh, take the first place. She's looking good, but she's a little bit tight past, the, I would say, the 60 to 75 uh, mark. And this is where Jackson nips her right here at the tape. She has a good finish, lean, but just not strong enough in the stretch. Still qualifies her, and I think she will run probably, uh, uh, here's the start of the race. The concentration is good. She's off. Her first step is excellent. She's a little bit high coming up, but she's still in the race. Her form looks good. And she is it's basically what you call a, a, not a small sprinter, but a relatively tall sprinter. Well, you know her well, and she's uh, undergone uh, some incredible uh, misfortune early in her life to, to get to where she is right now. Right, although she took a second place in this um, heat, she's still uh, a good contender. I would say a good contender from the standpoint that she overcame so many uh, difficulties in her early childhood. She was born uh, three pounds, and from there she had asthma all of those years. And um, she was in and out of the hospital. I think she stayed in the hospital the first six months. So she's had a terrible time, and she wore a special shoe because she had a club foot. And then it goes on from the standpoint of her getting into the race, um, maintaining, and uh, falling out a couple of times when she's very young, and uh, being encouraged to run. So her mental attitude is great. Well, here she is now going to the semifinals. By the way, Loval of France winds up third, and Davis of the Bahamas fourth. So now we have the field of 16 set for the semifinals and the finals which take place tomorrow. You told us earlier, as you look at the Americans who qualify, that you expected Evelyn Ashford to win the gold, and I take it nothing's happened today to dissuade that opinion. Oh, of course not. I think Evelyn is still one of the greatest runners in the world, and we will see in um, the semis because the, the more races that she runs, the more the confidence built. And you could see when she finished, her hands were up, and she was happy, so that means she's going to really be up for the race. All right, that's the story of today's Women's 100. Right now, let's go back to Jim McKay. Okay, Alan, Wilma, quite a day, remember now, and an evening coming up here. We're going to be seeing the uh, American men and, of course, the other men from uh, People's Republic of China and from Japan in the individual event finals of gymnastics. By the way, they don't perform on all the uh, gear at once in this one, all of the equipment and apparatus, so you can really focus on each piece of apparatus as it is used. Coming up very shortly, we're going to have the semifinals live of the men's 100 meters featuring Carl Lewis, of course, and later on, on this same program live, the final of that race. The gold medal will be awarded this evening. We have so many things coming up. There's a lot more swimming on the final day of swimming competition. But in just a minute, we're going to show you a tremendous rowing race, women's rowing up on Lake Casitas outside Santa Barbara. Look at the shot from overhead of that Coliseum, almost filled. We'll be back after this word from our local station. Every crime starts in the mind, in the heart. I'm a police psychiatrist. My specialty, criminal behavior. Sometimes the difference between life and death isn't a gun or a knife, but compassion, understanding. Sometimes that's the only thing that can stop the trigger finger. Lindsay Wagner, she's with you as Jesse this fall. We're with you on ABC with you. Charlie, I know. You go get the pumps. I'm gonna go make the call. Right. 
Yeah, this is David Treeland. Uh, we're going to need a couple of your large pumps. There's no way I'm going to get through this road. It's flooded out. Oh, uh, no. Hey, I, I'll tell you what you're going to have to do is that... Uh... Hi, David. About dinner tonight, I'm going to have to pass. I... Not again. All of these people, places, and services were brought together by one new corporation. Southwestern Bell, we're bringing you together. That's what we do. Depend on us. We're always there. Bringing you together with local telephone service, the yellow pages, cellular mobile systems, and the latest equipment for your home and business. We're the new Southwestern Bell Corporation. Together. Anybody for a wet burrito? <laughs> <laughs> General Electric and McNair's want to offer you the greatest deal ever. It's our Summer Olympics sale with gold medal savings on GE refrigerators, ranges, GE color television sets, and video recorders. Plus, McNair's is open till 9 p.m., Monday through Friday, until 5 on Saturday. Don't be left at the starting gate. Hurry to the Summer Olympics sale at McNair's TV and Appliance. The money saver. Money saver. That's exactly what we do. We save money for you. This is 24 KBUE-TV, Austin. The games of the 23rd Olympiad continue. The eights are the premier event of any rowing meet. Let's set the lanes for you. In lane one will be Holland or the Netherlands. Romania, which has won five gold medals in five events here this morning, is in lane two. Federal Republic of Germany in lane three. Canada's in lane four. The United States is in lane five. And Great Britain is in lane six. East Germany won the gold in this event in 1976 at Montreal and in Moscow in 1980. In the only Olympic competition, the USA won the bronze in 76. Here's the United States team. The bow is... Cheryl Osteen, Holly Metcalf, Carol Bowers in the three spot, Kerry Graves in four, Gene Flanagan in five, Christine Aurelius in six, uh, Chris Thorsness in seven, and the stroke is Kathy Keeler, who is the rowing coach at Smith. The coxswain is Betsy Beard, a pharmacist. We're getting ready now to line him up for the start. And here's the coach, Bob Ernst of the University of Washington. USA coach here in the women's sweep. Remember now, the USA is a favorite. On their strong showing this summer, they beat the East Germans at Lucerne. They did not go against the uh, Soviets. Lining the bow up. The start will be in French, and uh, Steve Gladstone, the rowing coach at Brown University, will explain it to you. Yes, what they do first, Kurt, is they pull the crews. They ask each crew if they're ready to start. They go down lane by lane by lane. When they're all ready to go, the starting command is... Et vous prêt, which means are you ready, then followed by parte, which means go. If the USA wins this event, wins the gold medal, they can truly be the best in the world because East Germany had claimed that title this past summer and the U.S. crew had defeated them. They call themselves fast and ugly. There's, he's got his watch. He's going to get his stroke. That's a watch that they count the strokes per minute. Steve has one here with me. We'll pick that up. This is a visually striking... Sport. Watch the unison. Eight people as one. And when they're that way, you've got a great rowing crew. You talk about teamwork, this is it. And physical conditioning, these people are in tremendous shape from the tips of their toes right up to their head. Every muscle of their body. This is a power sport and a graceful sport. Yes. You know, Kurt, most people think this is the ultimate team sport. The unity, there has to be visual unity. Indeed, the blades have to go in and out of the water at precisely the same moments. The body move in unity. However, of equal importance is the unity of purpose in that boat. Those people have to be inspired. They have to have complete trust in one another, and this group seems to have those qualities. Now, let's see, we have a fair start. If we do, we'll have a white flag. And it looks like a fair start. Remember, the USA is in lane five. They'll be in the white with the blue and red stripe diagonally down their jerseys. Romania is in lane two, the other crew to watch. They'll be in the blue jersey. 
Yes, right now the crews are all side by side. In this first 20 strokes of the race, that's the racing start. They get out of the blocks as quickly as they can with tremendous force and power, then maintain a high, powerful pace right to the finish line. A thousand meters, the United States has won the silver medal in three consecutive world championships. They think a slow start cost them some gold medals. Right now, the United States lane five with a five on the shell is in the lead in lane four is canada almost even with them that's it right now u.s leading canada second and romania across the way now has taken a lead of a couple of feet in lane two right now kurt it's a real boat race between the romanians and the americans the telling point will be over these next three or four hundred meters will the the pace of the american boat be strong enough to keep abreast of that romanian crew right now it's really too early to tell them. but we do know we've got a great race between that american crew and the romanian crew all right romania slightly the united states second you're looking at the romanian crew and what a team they've had here they're in a lead of that well the united states just came up on them but the romanians have won five gold medals out of five events they're hoping for a clean sweep and the united states will be trying to stop them the Romanian crew is rowing with tremendous length in the water. I've mentioned that in the earlier races. They row a very long stroke. We know for certain that they're well conditioned. We're going to have a real tight race here. Here's the bow person on the American crew driving. The U.S. crew looking good, looking very poised, looking steady. They'll be coming down in front of the grandstand and the temple of the crowd war will be reaching you. Look at that. There's a visually striking sport. Oars going in together. Oars coming out together. Perfect unison. This is going to be a very close race between Romania and the United States. Romania in the blue. They're in the number two lane. America in the number five lane. They're almost in a dead heat as they're approaching that finish line. The United States will have to put it on now. They've uh, moved ahead a couple, three feet. The United States going for the finish. Now lengthen their lead to about a yard, yard and a half. Going out a little bit farther for the gold medal in the eighth. The United States takes a bigger lead for the finish line. Romania second. A two-boat race for the gold medal. The United States, look at them go, pouring that power on. That's a great race. They had to dig down deep. Here they are, driving to the line. And they there they are. It. They win the gold medal. The United States eighth. Romania second. And across the way, it appears to be Holland for the bronze. Bob Ernst, being congratulated, a gold medal. So Romania did not sweep the finals of the women. They won five of the six gold medals, officially utter exhaustion. Just quick. The turning point in that race was with 200 meters to go. The Romanians had a slight lead or were driving. At that point, the American crew dug down deep and responded. Look at this finish. United States, a couple of yards over a very game Romanian crew. Look at that drive. Kurt. Look at that boat drive. They're lifting the boat out each stroke. That's skating across the water. Boy, I'll tell you, that hole's barely in the water. They're the Romanian crew. Or the silver. On. And across the way, here comes Holland. And here's the reaction from the coach. All right. Bob Hurts of the All University right. of Washington. Well, a great victory for the Americans in that most exciting race. However, in every one of the other five finals contested today in women's rowing, the gold medal went to Romania. A tremendous showing by the Romanians who have come here not only with their gymnasts, but uh, with an extremely talented team just about across the board. Also one of the most popular groups in town. So, that was the story of Casitas. We hope to show you some of the Romanian victories a little bit later. We'll be back. Welcome to Major Motion USA. Population, very happy. Folks here have discovered the advantages of Nissan technology. Oh, there's Jane Fairman. <laughs> that central wagon has become the Little League bus. Well, Nissan designed it with plenty of room. Oh, hi, Jerry. Been to the mountains? <laughs> he takes that Nissan 4 by... We'll be in the first, which is upcoming in just a couple of minutes. The first four finishers in each heat qualify for the finals which will take place at about 7:10 local time tonight ron brown right there number 887 what about running the 100 meter dash is it as simple as it seems well let's find out from the juice oj simpson now who better to talk to you about the proper way to start 
than your boy, the juice. These once feared feet, hey, I used to be tough out of the blocks. Now, the 100 meter is the shortest race in the Olympics, so it's obvious if you make a mistake here, the chances of you being around to collect any kind of medal at the end are practically nil. Now, we have one of our top competitors, Ron Brown here. Ron has asked me to help him on his start because he'd like to win some kind of medal here. Now, Ron, listen to me. The first two things you got to think about is you want to keep your hands behind the start line. So get down here. And the other rule is that you got to have some part of your foot on the ground. Other than that, you just want good balance on your arms and hands. You want to have your body leaning forward. Okay? Are you relaxed? Relax. I'm going to cook you here. All right. Set. Go! Go! <laughs> yeah, but what we didn't show you is Brown was the first to the rental car counter when that <laughs> was all over. All right, the Juice has joined me in the booth right now as we get set for this race. Grady, we saw him yesterday. We saw Brown yesterday. What about this heat as you look at it, O.J.? Well, this is going to be the tougher of the two heats as we look at the crowd. Look at this afternoon attendance, 90,000. Al Davis, who plays here with his Rams, or has his Rams, I mean, Raiders playing in this stadium, would like to see that every week. But uh, the big question here is Ron Brown. In the trials, he has a little problem with the tendon behind his left knee. Uh, he didn't look good at all in the trials. Actually, he was beaten by the Italian um, uh, Tillis. Tilly, rather, and uh, that's the big question here is how is he going to run this race? But the two lanes to watch are going to be the two inside lanes and the two outside lanes. On uh, in the first lane, you'll see Ray Stewart uh, from Jamaica. He looked real good in the trials. There he is right there. He uh, ran a 10.25, the third uh, fastest time in the uh, quarterfinals, and he's going to be fast out of the blocks, and he should be right next with, rather, the guy uh, next to him, Sam Grady, who has uh, had the second best time in the quarterfinals, and probably my choice for a silver medal here. All right, in lane three, just one name, Pernomo from Indonesia. In lane four, Donovan Reed does not figure to be a factor in this race. In lane five, Mark Gasparoni. It would be surprising if he, too, would finish up uh, with Brown or Grady. Christian Haas is a, a bit of a question mark. Pretty good sprinter, Ron Brown, despite that slight injury that O.J. referred to, is in lane seven. Desai Williams is a fine sprinter, 10.5. 1-7 is his On your mark. lifetime best in lane 8. Well, you look at those two outside lanes, 7 and 8, Ron Brown, as we say, with the question mark with his left knee, and that's say Williams, who is from Canada. He's 5'9", and he's going to be a wingback, or try to be a wingback up in the Canadian Football League when this season's over. Of course, Ron Brown will be going to the Los Angeles Rams. But this is the big question mark here. He's been favored to get some type of medal in this race, probably a silver or a gold in the finals, but had a problem with his knee and he didn't look good in his yeah. final heat this morning. Meanwhile, Grady in lane two is talking about beating Lewis and right there it looked like Pernomo was the man in, in lane three who jumped. So a false start, you're allowed one and then uh, the second and you're done. So Pernomo was the man who does not figure to be a factor in this race. Well, we know Sam Grady is a, is a tough competitor. He's a front runner. He likes to run out in front. He normally is at his top speed at about 50 yards he gets there sooner than anyone else in this race of course from 50 meters on the key is to try to relax and hold that speed normally around uh, the latter part of the race the last uh, I guess 20 meters uh, someone like Lewis would pull on him but uh, in this race I don't see anyone with the exception of Ron Brown when he is sharp that mark. has that pulling power late in a race that can catch Sam Grady I expect him to be out in front and probably lead this race all the way Against Stewart in one, Grady in two, then Brown in seven, Williams in eight. The key men, question mark in lane six, Christian Haas. Again, four will go to the final. The final to take place in about two and a half hours. Grady in two, Brown in seven. And again, we have a false start. It looked like Gasparoni in lane five. So we've had a false start from...